finding it hard to believe that that tomorrow, Thursday, is Thanksgiving Day here in the United States. And all I can say is where has this year gone? This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And so here we are on the verge of finishing up the second to the last month of the year 2022. And what a year this has been. And I say that not just because of the news headlines that we've talked about, the stories that we have shared, and the truth that has come out, even though many still will deny it, will still pretend certain things have not happened, are not happening, because, well, it kills the narrative that many have been trying to push for well over two and a half years. And right now we're heading really to the three-year mark of the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. And here we are, almost three years later, still talking about this and still not recognizing much of the truth about this. Now, a lot of it's come out, no doubt in my mind about that. Many people are beginning to understand the truth and it's going to become, as I really believe in my heart, overwhelming. Yet there are many people that are still pushing a few lies. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. And then a couple of other stories that I do want to share with you. I want to thank all of you that listen to this radio program and all of you that have been supportive of this effort from the very beginning. In some cases, we started this radio program in 2020 and I didn't know if it was going to last a couple of months, maybe six months, maybe a year, maybe the world would become a better place. Yeah, right. And the need for a program like this would would vanish. But if anything, the need for more voices to speak the truth, to speak truth into the darkness needs to be out there. And so I just want to ask you at the very beginning of this program, and I normally don't do this, but Would you pray about giving this radio program your support? It really needs it. Now, I've debated some things over the last several months, you know, in ways to help grow truth to ponder. I'm not well funded. I don't have corporate sponsors. I don't have these special deals that give me a, you know, a promo code to get you a discount on buying something, whether it's preparation supplies, uh, sheets and pillows. I'm not I'm not mocking that. Please don't read that into what I'm saying. But I've never gone there. And when I mentioned it the other day, a listener sent me a nice little email that said, "Yeah, a lot of places it's almost become a business more than an information service." And that's sad. Look, I know it takes money to produce radio programs and videos. And to support somebody, I get it because the workman is worth his wage. I'm in a unique position. I'm pretty much retired from all of my secular work. And so I give of my time and I'm the only person that puts this program together, though I could really use some help. Trust me on that from time to time. I really, I really could. But I do want to see it grow. And, and that, that listener wrote, he said, we don't want to have patriots, you know, P-A-Y, patriots. And, and there's a lot of organizations and companies that have been built around that premise of, of being a patriot, being a prepper, uh, being somebody that understands how to hide from the new world order. You're not going to hide from it. It's coming. And, and you're not going to be hidden. Are you really prepared the way you need to be prepared? That's what this radio program is all about. Now, I've got a couple of quick stories that I want to share. And one of the things that I'm thankful for, and by the way, you have time between now and, you know, first part of Thanksgiving. I'm I'm putting the radio program together for Thanksgiving, late Thanksgiving morning. If you would email me what you're thankful about, send it to me directly, bob at truth, the number two, ponder.com. Bob at truth, use the number two, not the word two, the number two, ponder.com. That email will come directly to me. 
Now, I'm not going to share your names or anything personal, but I'd like to know what you're thankful for. Several people heard me say it yesterday, and they've already contacted me. And, and I'll share just a few things tomorrow about the things that I'm thankful for. One of the things that I am thankful for is that Dr. Fauci is retiring. I really am. And what I'm really, but, you know, even on his way out the door, reporters, and this, I got a kick out of this, the White House went apoplectic, you know, their their press secretary, whatever she is, just couldn't handle it when a reporter asked a question. So can you tell us the origins of COVID? And it was like, no, 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 no. He's still holding on to the lie. The man is still holding on to the lie and he still wants you to take an experimental vaccine. The man is evil. Listen to him. So my message and my final message, maybe the final message I give you from this podium is that please, for your own safety, for that of your family, Get your updated COVID-19 shot as soon as you're eligible to protect yourself, your family, and your community. And, and what is amazing is how many people still believe that these vaccines prevent you from ever getting or spreading or coming down with COVID of any form of variation. Really? Then why did Dr. Fauci come down with COVID? Why did Rochelle Walensky, the head of the CDC, come down with covid two maybe three times or we're not certain about we know it's two the same with the president all these vaccinated people coming down with covid how can that possibly be if they are protected what a bunch of nonsense and they keep pushing it and now we have the president adding oh let's keep the emergency alive till april of next year in 2023 why not let's go into year number three I thought he said not long ago the pandemic was over, but I guess they want to keep the power alive in the White House to control your life. What I find disturbing when you look at that video and the comments of, you know, after what Fauci says, get your vaccine, you have all these people saying people that don't get boosters are putting everybody at risk. It's a bunch of baloney. It doesn't stop you from getting or spreading. People still believe it. And then somebody else goes, yeah, Pfizer rocks. I haven't had COVID. Well, I know a lot of unvaccinated people that never had COVID either, just in case you're curious. But but you can believe what you want to believe. The reason we have been doing this program from the very beginning is to share the stories that much of the mainstream media censors. And we can say one thing, looking over the past couple of years, look at the stories that we shared that ultimately were proven to be true, including the Hunter Biden laptop. That was one we talked about, got me thrown off of Twitter early on. How dare you speak truth on Twitter Twitter is an echo chamber of propaganda. That's what it really was. And for many, it still is. And a lot of people are lamenting, what do you mean? We don't need, we don't want freedom of speech on Twitter. We want to control the narrative just like Nazi Germany did back in the 1930s. You say what we tell you to say or else. So would you consider helping us stay on radio? I believe it's important in these very perilous times. I'm glad that we're out there as a podcast. Maybe there's ways we can do something different with the podcast so we can become self-sustaining and and do better and grow to reach more people. But for you that can help with the radio, just remember this address and our ministry name, Ancient Word Radio, Post Office Box 510. That's Ancient Word Radio, P.O. Box 510. Chilhowee, Virginia, C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E, Chilhowee, Virginia, and the zip code in Chilhowee, 24319. That's 24319, and we'll give that address again before the end of the program. Also, our website, Truth, the number 2, ponder.com, has all of that information and other ways to help us out. Now, I want to share something with you briefly before we get into our next topic. My wife and I had the opportunity. We watched the movie that you've probably heard about called Died Suddenly. And it's put out by a 
a person that does their own video podcast, Stu Peters. I'm sure many of you know who he is. And and I and the movie was produced by uh, Matthew Scow, who we've actually had on this program, oh, many, many months ago, talking about another video that he produced. And so we watched it in its entirety. And, and I wish I had a way that I could, you know, work out something with Stu Peters and the people that produce this to find ways of getting it to you, those that don't have internet. I, I wish there was a way I could do that. I'm going to look into it. I really believe you need to see this movie. Um, It's going to give you some truth that a lot of people are not wanting to ever admit. Yet my heart keeps telling me that God is going to pull back a veil. Now, those that have given themselves over to evil will be deluded to keep believing the lies. They'll keep injecting themselves. They'll keep believing we can stop COVID with a worthless vaccine. They will keep believing that this came naturally. They'll believe everything they're told. Those that know the truth will really know that they know the truth. They'll feel vindicated. And many that have been on the fence, their eyes are going to be open during, I really believe, a season. I hope that Dr. Fauci doesn't hide behind the Fifth Amendment next year when he is called before the Congress to answer for what he did. As a government employee, he can't. But see, now that he's retiring, he can. So just just watch how this plays out starting in maybe around January, February. Now, to complete today's radio program, we bring to the microphone my good friend who has been such a blessing to me, Jim Calhoun. And I am thankful for what Jim Calhoun does to help me out, to make, to take a little bit off my plate each week. And today, Jim is coming to the microphone to share the things that he is thankful for this Thanksgiving. Thanks, Bob. And it's great to be back on Truth to Ponder. Well, this is my Thanksgiving edition of Truth to Ponder. And one thing that we need to be thankful for right off the bat is that I got word from Bob Bierman that his health is improving. And if we can't be, th- and, th- and believe, and I've been really concerned about Bob, and I'm really happy to hear that things are starting to come his way as far as health wise. And so we can all give thanks for that. And as well, we can give thanks for programs such as Truth to Ponder and people such as Bob Bierman who come out, who do their utmost best to bring you the truth and to bring you some guidance. Well, again, I'd like to say thank you to Bob. And again, and I'd like to thank Bob for allowing me to speak to his great audience. And as I record this, this is the third time I'm recording the first part of the show because I'm testing out some new software and it's testing me out too because every time I get a segment recorded it dumps it and it not only dumps it as far as the program crashes I don't know where the recordings go but I've done massive searches all through my computer and it's just not there and so I'm recording this for the third time and I'm thankful that I do have the ability to do that but if the first half and but I was able to recover the second half of the show and so I'm going to try to go from memory what I said during this first half and just do my best such is the wonders of modern technology with old minds such as myself trying to figure it all out but I really don't think it's my issue but I really don't think it's my fault I'm just getting things just I just hit save and instead of never scratch that. Well, during this Thanksgiving season, we need to take time to give thanks. It seems like that modern culture, modern society has taken the holiday of Thanksgiving and they've relegated and they've relegated it to a second class type of a they've relegated it they've relegated it to a second class hol- to a second class holiday it seems like anymore it just runs right from halloween right into christmas and as you're trying to 
And it seems like all of October and November, you're tripping over elves and Santa Clauses and everything else if you go into a store. And while Christmas is a Christian holiday, it's been so secularized and so corrupted with Santa Claus and elves and the meaning of and just taking the whole meaning of Christmas and just changing the whole meaning and purpose of Christmas to fit a secular narrative. Now, they haven't been able to do that with Thanksgiving. <coughs> and one reason is just simply the name Thanksgiving, because you have to ask, give thanks for what? And give thanks to who? Well, we have, well, I'm going to answer those two. Well, I'm going to give you my opinion on well, I'm going to go ahead and touch on that. Of course, the who is Almighty God. And the reason why is because Almighty God is so wonderful. And he's done so many things for everyone, all of his children. And he's put all of his... He's given us a wonderful world in which to live. The beauty is just astounding the creation that he has created for us to use and enjoy. We have so many things to be thankful for, and it seems like that it's easy to languish in the gloom and doom because everywhere you look is just corruption and horrible things that are happening everywhere. But still, God is in charge, and I'm thankful for that. But I think it's time... And I really do think it's time that Thanksgiving is used for what it was purpose. And I really think that Thanksgiving is better suited for us to revisit the original reason for the first Thanksgiving and understand that God did, God had his hand all over those people. God, God has always had his hand on his children. And the original Thanksgiving was founded. By a group of God's children that God that they by a group of God's children who felt the loving, caring, helping hand of God get them through a rough situation. And these people were wise enough to understand that all of this did come from God the blessing that they had the blessings that they had truly did come from truly did come from almighty god and they and they and they freely acknowledge that god is just god is working in each and every one of our lives just as much as he was for the first for the first partakers of that god is still active god is just as active and connected with his children now as he was then. And we need to be thankful for that. We need to be thankful that we have the method to inter we need to be we need to be thankful that God has given us a mechanism through prayer to speak to God. And God does speak back to us. We just have to be able to learn how to listen. And I'm very thankful for that. There's so many things in this world that God has put for his children. There's so many things that God created in this world that are just so wonderful. And one of the most wonderful things he created was you and me and all of mankind. And it's unfortunate that, and it's unfortunate that society has changed things out from under God as much as they can. They've tried to take God out of the school. They've taken God out of the schools. <clears throat> and they've and they've really relegated God to a second. And they've really and they've really taken God and pushed God back to the back burner as far as our culture is concerned. And I think that's one of the reasons that we have so much cultural decay, why we have why we have the chaos and all of the problems we have is because Almighty God has been pushed back into the background. 
Well, I'm thankful that God never leaves us. We might leave him from time to time, but God never leaves us. And I'm so thankful for that. And as a society, God, and as a society, we need to bring God back to the forefront. And one of the best ways we can do that is by acknowledging God with an entire day of is with acknowledging God with an entire life full of giving thanks to our Creator. Our Creator. And it and having one day to give thanks is all well and good, but it should be every day. But Thanksgiving has been changed into eating too much, watching too much TV as far as football, and then going out on Black Friday and joining that chaos. That's not what Thanksgiving is. That's not what it should be about. Thanksgiving should be spent in reverence and giving thanks to Almighty God for all of his blessings. And one of the things that God blesses us with is his presence. That is so, that is just awesome that we have a God that cares enough to reveal himself to us and be in our presence and allow us to be in his presence. Now, a lot of people spend holiday seasons, a lot of people don't like the holiday seasons because they spend them alone and that just makes them feel more lonely. And I spend my I spend my holidays pretty much alone, and so I understand your feelings. But I al- but I also have discovered that I'm never alone, and neither are you. If you're a child of God, God is with you. God dwells within you, and you take God with you wherever you go. And so you're never alone. And while I don't have and and so and so while I don't have this great big holiday dinner and all the trimmings and everything. I do understand that it is, but I, I still celebrate Thanksgiving, but I do it in a way that I give thanks. I give thanks to our creator for all the beauty he's put in my life and all the beauty he's put in everyone's life. You know, it's real easy to look at all of the bad, all of the chaos and destruction and corruption, but There's a flip side to that coin, and the flip side is beautiful, and it's love, and it's caring. And we might say, well, the world belongs to Satan, and the world, and we might say the world belongs to Satan, and the society that we have has rejected God, where, while I do agree with those statements, the flip side of that is God is never, the flip side of that. The flip side of that coin is, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks, God is sovereign and he's still in control. It doesn't matter what anyone feels, it, it really doesn't matter how society, is a, how society in general views Almighty God. No, scratch that. No matter what happens as far as people's perception, God is still there. God is still caring, and God is still loving each and every one of his children. Sometimes we don't feel very loved, and we feel alone, or we feel attacked or neglected. But those feelings are only human. But there's a flip side to that coin, too. Because while everything that it is while everything I just said might be happening, you might be, you might actually are living in a world, we, your situation might be very dire. But God still loves you. God still cares for you. And we need to be thankful that we have an advocate in Jesus Christ who is interceding for us at the right hand of God. And so, and in my opinion, we need to look at the big picture during Thanksgiving. And the big picture is, is that God is in control. God loves his children. God does care, and he's caring for each and every one of us. I know personally, I can 
name lots of God moments where I felt the presence of God come into a situation and either smooth it over, calm it down, make it better, or just get through it in. Or it's a situation where God uses that to help me grow. And I know each and every one of, and I know each and, and I know all of my brothers and sisters out there can match me word for word as far as feeling the presence of God and having God, and having God help guide them through their life. <clears throat> and I know some people who are children of God that don't feel like God intervenes or God is there. And to those people, I'm going to tell you that God is there. You just haven't felt him. You need to. I'm here to tell you that God is there and God is there for you and God loves you. And maybe, and maybe if we just start listening in a different way, we'll hear him or feel him. Maybe if we start listening in a different way, we'll feel him and feel his presence. And I'm thankful that God has given, and I'm thankful that God has given his children the ability to walk and, and worship him. And I'm thankful that God has given his children the ability to worship him and to honor him and to give us the perception that God is there and to give us the discernment. And I'm thankful that God gives us guidance and discernment and wisdom and all of the things that we need to keep praying that we receive from God. But the first Thanksgiving, the first, the people that endured the hardships that brought them to that first Thanksgiving day were people that knew where their strength came from. They knew where their bounty that they received came from. They really had a good handle on who was watching over them and who loved them. And if I get, and I think that's one thing that's lost on modern Thanksgiving is the fact is the fact that the people that celebrated that first Thanksgiving were true believers and God was watching over them. It wasn't just, thank you for the food. It was much more than that. It wasn't one day of food. It was God's loving hand watching over his children. <clears throat> and that in itself is very awesome. And so I don't think we should let Thanksgiving become a holiday that becomes neglected or second rate. We shouldn't just run from one holiday to another with Thanksgiving in the middle somewhere and no one really care and the vast and the vast majority of people just using that as a day off and a day to watch football or eat too much or for people to go shopping. I would hope that each and every one of the listeners to Truth to Ponder understands the real meaning of Thanksgiving. And I suspect that most, if not all of you, do know this. But the world is so full of hurt, and it's so full of corruption and evil. We need to go out and spread love and happiness. And we really do need to let people know where our strength really comes from. And let them know that we're thankful for that. We should be thankful that we have a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. We should never hide the fact that we do have a personal relationship with Almighty God. This world right now has massive questions, and they're looking for answers. And we as Christians claim to have some, if not all, of the answers that these people are really looking for. So it's time that we were more bold, and we stepped out, and we shared our faith, and we shared our beliefs. I know that we're living in an ungrateful world that likes to shun people that are true believers, I understand that it's not a great time to go out and talk to people about Almighty God and what God is doing in their life and in your life. 
and what he's doing in the world. But just because I said it's not a great time, it just means it might be a little harder. It's actually the best time. It's a period of time where if the world ever needed to hear about the good news of the Bible, if the world ever needed to hear about the love that God has for this world and for his children, that time is now. And I'm thankful for all of God's children. I'm thankful for all of my brothers and sisters. And I'm thankful that we have the technology that we can reach out to each other through the radio or podcasts or cell phones or by letter or however we communicate. I'm very thankful that we do have those lines of communications open. But more than that, I'm thankful for prayer. I'm thankful for the line of communication that we have with our Father. And so as I contemplate this Thanksgiving, I look around and I see so much beauty and so much caring and so much love that just pours forth from the Creator to His children. And I'm so thankful that we serve a just and caring, loving God. And I'm very thankful that God has given us an immune system to where we automatically can fight off lots of diseases and lots of illness. God has given us many abilities, mentally and physically, that we need to be thankful for. And I like to use the Thanksgiving holiday not only to give reverence to Almighty God and to thank Him for all the wonderfulness that He does for us and the wonderfulness of who He is, I also am thankful for the people that God has put in my life. I'm thankful for Bob Bierman. I'm thankful for you, the listener, to take your time to listen to the show. I really do appreciate it. I'm thankful for all of my friends. I'm thankful for my animals. I have so much to be thankful for. But it would be so easy to be spiteful and bitter. It would be so easy to look back at my life and look at my shortcomings and my failures and to look at those who I think have not treated me very well. And everyone has people like that in their life that they just have not got along with in a way that they wish they could have. And everyone has trials and tribulations. And so every one of us could turn bitter. Every one of us can not look at the big picture. We can have self-pity and be selfish, and we can take everything the wrong direction. Or we can wake up each morning and see the beautiful, wonderful day that God has laid out before not only me, but everyone else. And we all have an opportunity to use that day for good. And it seems like too many people are using their time for evil things. And so I think it's time that God's children filled the world with good things because they're there. God created such a wonderful place for us to live. And we have so much to be thankful for. And Jim, you are so right. We do, in spite of everything, we have so much to be thankful for. I'm going to ask this question real quick. What are you thankful for today? I know things are are tough for many, but still, We should give thanks with a grateful heart. Tomorrow on Thanksgiving Day, I'm going to do a very special program. And we still have time, you still have time, to send me a quick email. I'm going to be producing the radio program on Thursday morning. So if you can send me an email and tell me what you're thankful for, I'd like to include some of the things you are thankful for this year. And my email address is Bob at truth the number two ponder.com that's bob at truth the number two ponder.com i'm not going to be cultivating some kind of an email list i may acknowledge your email but you're not going to be on a list getting emails continuously from me i don't do that that's not how i operate never have i just don't feel that i want to intrude in your life now i'm going to ask you once again if you can help us stay on the radio it means the world to me Airtime is not cheap. And we have bills coming up next week. And so if you can help us out, would you consider making a check payable to Ancient Word Radio? That's Ancient Word Radio. And the mailing address is Post Office Box 510. That's P.O. Box 510. 
And the city is Chilhowee, C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E, Chilhowee, Virginia. And the zip code in Chilhowee, Virginia is 24319. That is 24319. And your gift to this ministry is really appreciated to keep us on WRMI and weekends at KVOH. We'd love to be on more stations, and maybe as we go into next year, it could happen if you would consider giving us your support. You can also visit the website, truth2ponder.com, and find other ways to help us out as well. And we'll be right back after this break. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman, the thinker. Coming up, Shalom Aleichem. This is the nice Jewish boy, Jonathan Kahn, your Jewish connection, bringing you the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus. Now get your pen out as fast as you can so you don't miss out. I'm receiving a special free gift you're going to get and love in a moment. The word for Jew in Hebrew is Yehuda, or Yehudi, rather. Yehudi comes from Yehuda, which means to thank. To thank, to praise, but to thank. So if you're born again, the Bible says you are a fellow citizen of Israel, though you're born of the commonwealth of Israel. That means you're a Jewish in spirit. And if you're Jewish in spirit, you're a Yehuda in spirit, Yehudi. It means your identity is to give thanks. You're primarily to give thanks. You're one who speaks thanks. You're one who's always giving thanks. That's your central identity. So are you a thanker? Are you known for that? Are you, are you the opposite? Are you a complainer? You know, you know, are you someone who praises and blesses no matter what? That's what you're to be known for. The, what's the key thing that comes out of your mouth? It's to be thanks and blessing. So it's a good thing to do anyway. You need to do it. But it's also central to who you are. It's central to your joy, central to your peace, central to your identity, your Jewish in spirit. Listen, look at your blessings. Count your blessings. Number them. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Remind yourself. Write them down. All you have to do is be thankful. It's amazing how all of a sudden you're going to be feeling so happy, so blessed, so content, so rich, so joyful, so peaceful. Get into the habit of thanks, the practice of thanksgiving. Thank God every day for your salvation. Thank God for whatever it is. Because the one who's always giving thanks for all things, that's the one who is blessed. And there's nothing more Jewish than that. Now, the free gift for you. And here's something you can give thanks for. From the sands of Judea, the wilderness, to the wings of the cherubim, to the writings of the rabbis that prove Jesus, Yeshua is the Messiah, the awesome long hidden mystery. Now reveal the mystery of the temple doors on CD. You'll love it. And Sapphire is guaranteed to bless your socks all. How do you get these gifts free? Easy. Just remember Jesus is really renamed Yeshua. And that's it. You dial it. Just call 1 800 Yeshua 1. You will be blessed, but call now. That's 1 800 Y E S H U A 1. I invite you to minister with me. In, in the, one of the most exciting things, bringing salvation to God's ancient people, Israel, and to the unreached peoples of all nations of five continents with over a billion people. It's amazing. It's the farthest way your life can ever impact the world for the gospel. It's the farthest way you could ever spread it. It beams the word of life. It blankets the earth. Just call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's Y-E-S-H-U-A-1. Or you can write me direct. Here's how. Just write to the nice Jewish boy, box 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. That's the nice Jewish boy box, 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. Well, till next time, this is Jonathan Kahn saying, give thanks, my friend, for he is good. Shalom Aleichem, peace be to you in Messiah, Sar Chaim, the Prince of Life. This is Truth to Ponder. With Bob Bierman. Welcome back to the second half of Truth to Ponder. I'm Jim Calhoun sitting in today for Bob Bierman. And I really appreciate Bob Bierman allowing me to come to his great audience. And again, thanks for listening. And this show is all about giving thanks. And I'm not talking about eating the turkey, I'm talking about truly being thankful for the things that we have and the person that we are, not just possessions, but who we are on the inside, and thankful to God for salvation and for Him giving His only Son to die for our sins. There are so many things to be thankful for. And so, I'm going to start telling you what I'm thankful for. First and foremost, I'm thankful that Bob Behrman is doing better. He kind of gave me a scare. He sent me an email and told me some of what was going on and frankly I didn't like 
some of the things that was happening to him as far as it was kind of unsettling. But I do know that Bob took care of things. He was on top of it. And he went to good doctors and had good care. But also he had thousands of people that listened to this program, as well as personal friends and family members and acquaintances of Bob were all praying for him. And so I'm thankful that Bob is doing better. So I give thanks to God for all of his healing and all of his wisdom and all of his guidance that he's given Bob through kind of a trying period that he's went through. But on top of that, I'm thankful that we have a God that does care, that we have a God that has allowed us to fellowship with him through prayer. So I thank God for our ability to have prayer. Lots of times people say, well, I'll pray for you, but they never do. In a way, that was their prayer, just telling them they're going to pray. And I know lots of people have been guilty of that, me included. But we should never take prayer for granted. Prayer is absolutely the strongest thing that we can do. Okay, let's talk about a world event of any type. Let's say the economy. Let's say that we have the economy crashes. Wouldn't you like to have the ability to talk to the head of your bank? Wouldn't you like to have the ability to talk to the President of the United States to give them your opinions and your guidance of how you think it should be handled? Wouldn't you like to be in the presence of anybody who is an authority that could change the outcome of a situation you're in? Well, I'm telling you, we already have that through prayer. And so no matter what the situation is, good or bad, God is there 24-7. It's been said that he's only a prayer away, but I don't think he's even that far away. Because Almighty God is everywhere. And for true believers of Jesus Christ, Jesus is within us. We're a lot closer than a prayer away. And so it's a lot of little things that we need to be thankful for. I talked about the economy, so let's talk about your job or your career. Or maybe you're retired. You should be thankful that God gave you the opportunity to do what you wanted to do as far as a profession is concerned. Even those who just float from job to job need to be thankful for those jobs. God has his hand in everything, and he's everywhere. And so if you landed a job that you really wanted, you might say it's because of your schooling and your training and your dedication, and maybe you had a great resume. But never forget that Almighty God had a hand in it. Whether you know it or not, whether you acknowledge it or not, whether you accept what I just said or not, is immaterial. God has his hand in everything. You might say, well, what about when children die or a big catastrophe hits a family or a nation? Does God have his hand in that? Well, that's a debatable question. And my only answer to that is, yes, God has his hand in everything. What we perceive as good and what we perceive as bad, God still has his hand in everything. God gives us our quiet moments. God gives us that sense of fulfillment. God gave us our human mind to where we can comprehend and we can reason, and hopefully we can use it to better ourselves and better our surroundings, and ultimately better our world. And that's something that's sorely lacking in humanity right now, is people that truly want to leave this world a better place than when they came into this world. And I'm no exception. That's something that is a goal of mine. I would love to leave this world in a better condition than the world was in when I was born. But judging by how society has decayed and how old I'm getting, I don't think I'm going to be very successful at that, but I'm still going to try, and I'm still in prayer about what I can do to make a difference. 
the reason that I'm sitting in for Bob Behrman is to help Bob Behrman because I think Bob's a wonderful man and I really enjoy my time working to help him out and I very much enjoy you, his audience. I enjoy speaking to you. But I don't do this for self glorification. I don't do it because I'm trying to ride someone's coattails or you know, anything else that could be said about someone who's guest hosting. No, I truly do this because I am trying to make the world a better place than what I was born into. And like I say, the world has really went nuts since then. And so, am I going to leave it in a better place? Well, as far as the world is concerned, most likely not. But with individual people, individual situations, Possibly I can make those better than if I wasn't here to try to influence or try to give my opinion or what have you. And I have received quite a few emails and letters from people that I have touched and I have helped. And that makes me feel so great. And honestly, if nobody knew who I was and nobody knew my name ever, and I was able to help one family, then I would feel good about what I'm doing. Because all over the world, we're all just brothers and sisters. And we're all trying to lead a normal and happy, productive life. The people that I acquaint myself with are people that do not try to tear down a society or try to do anything that's wrong or illegal. But yet we have a world full of people that basically are hell-bent to do evil and to break laws and to hurt people. And I'm telling you right now, God did not put us on this world to hurt each other. That's not what we're all about. Unfortunately, society has sunk to that, but that's not our purpose. We are here to encourage each other, to lift each other up, to help each other, to be true brothers and sisters to each other in the truest sense of the word as far as being there for each other and standing the gap. We need to be locked arm in arm with our dedication to our Lord and Savior. We need to be locked arm in arm with protecting the unborn. We need to stand in total agreement that Almighty God is sovereign. And there's lots of reasons God put humans on this planet. And one of those reasons was so we could help each other. And so I'm thankful for the opportunity for me to come and speak to you once a week. And Bob has been really working hard trying to get some more shortwave airtime for me. And I really do appreciate that. And I really appreciate all of my listeners that listen to my show, the Living Off Grid Power and Information Show, that follow me over to Truth to Ponder. You don't know how much that means to me. And I have some very special people that I'm thankful for that are friends that that I've got to know through my music and also through the recording. And some of the friends have followed me from the music over to the Living Off Grid Power and Information Show, and that has got them all the way over to Truth to Ponder. And I really appreciate those people. And I mentioned her on my own show this last time, and I'm going to mention her on this show. It's Catherine from near Sargent, Nebraska, has been an absolutely wonderful supporter. And she's the type of person that I think we all need to be. I really respect her, and I love her very much. She's a very wonderful person. And she never misses an opportunity to be a blessing. She blesses people with food. She raises chickens, so she blesses people with eggs, and she puts in a huge garden knowing that she'll never use near the produce that she goes ahead and harvests. And so she gives it away to people, and she's got a true heart for humanity, and she's a very wonderful person. And I think that she's a great role model, and that's why I'm mentioning her. So I'm thankful for Catherine. I'm thankful for all the people like her. And the other people that send me emails and letters and cards, I'm thankful to each one of you. All of you have touched me in such a special way. 
And I got to admit, there's several times that I've had doubts about being on the radio, and I've had doubts about producing the show, and, you know, I'm awful busy. It would be real easy for me to say, nah, I'm going to quit. I've never been quite to that point, but I've had my moments where I've wondered why I'm doing this, and those have been selfish moments, I have to admit. But it never ceases to amaze me that on days like that, that I have those thoughts that cross my mind, I will get a letter, a card, or an email from a listener that says something so special and so profound that I immediately recognize that God put those words on the heart of the person that sent that to me because they said exactly what I needed to hear at the exact right time. And that's a God moment. And there's lots of God moments in everyone's lives if we take the time to look for those God moments. And that's another thing we could be thankful for is having those God moments. And once we recognize them and we learn to look for them, then we see them all the time. And there have been several God moments that I've had that have actually put a shiver down my spine. It was so profound. There have been times that God has done things through other people that has touched me so much that it's brought a tear to my eye just by a simple little letter or a text or an email that someone has sent. And I know that I'm never going to meet 99% of the people that support this show and support my show and the listeners. I know that there are people out there that I'll never meet. But I also know that there are a pretty good group of people that consider me as a friend just because they listen to me on a radio. And I got to be honest, I'm very humbled by that. I'm very touched by that. And so I consider all the listeners as part of my radio family. And so I really do appreciate when I do get cards, letters, and emails because it just gives me more strength. And yes, I do like the donations when they come in because they're necessary. But what pleases me as much as a donation is just a simple note that says I'm listening or keep up the good work, just any little thing at all, just any kind of contact. And so I'm thankful for those that take the time to donate to programs like Truth to Ponder and the Living Off Grid Power and Information Show. I really do appreciate the people that have a servant's heart. And that's another thing to be thankful for, and that's is the ability for us to have a servant's heart. Of course, we have to have a servant's heart towards Almighty God, but we need to have a servant's heart towards God's people. We need to have a servant's heart towards God's world. And you might say, this world has gone mad. And while I don't disagree with you, I have to ask you a question. Who created this world? Almighty God. So, who does this world belong to? Almighty God. He gave us dominion over this world, but it belongs to Almighty God. It doesn't belong to Satan. It doesn't belong to the degenerate people that are wandering the streets and molesting people. This world does not belong to the people that are causing all the social unrest and all of the demonic people out there. They don't own this world. Now, I understand not loving this world. It doesn't mean not loving the home that God made for all of us. In my understanding of the Bible, not being a part of the world means not being a part of the world systems and the culture and the degeneracy and all of the things that mankind has brought in to the world. But the creation itself of the rocks and the trees and the sky and the rivers and the oceans that belongs to Almighty God. And while, and while I say don't be of this world, and I'm one of those that don't want to be part of this world, I do very much want to be part of the natural world, the world that God created, not the world that man has corrupted. And so I'm thankful for this world that God created for me to have a home. I'm thankful for the beautiful skies. I'm thankful for the beautiful mountains and the wonderful crops and the trees and the rivers and the oceans and everything that Almighty God was able to create through his spoken words. 
I'm so thankful for everything that God has done in my life. Now, yes, I've had really bad things happen in my life. But you know what? Bad things happen here. And they happen to everybody. And so I could sit here and give you a whole laundry list of things that have happened to me that has that has physically, spiritually, and emotionally hurt me. But guess what? You as a listeners, you could match me story for story. Because we all have the same story. We all have the same journey. And so that's what I'm getting at. We are all brothers and sisters. We do understand how hard it can be and the struggles that we have to go through. But all of this struggling should only temper us and make us stronger. And we should always remember, never turn away from Almighty God. God has endowed us with the spirit of love and the spirit of caring and the spirit of giving. God has given us the wisdom and he's given us the mental capacity. And I'm talking about mankind as a whole. God has blessed his children. Now, sometimes children squander what they're given. And we're no different. A lot of societies worldwide have the same problems of putting God onto a back burner. And you look at those societies, which are mostly the Western cultures in both North and South America, Australia, Europe, and other places that have Western influence. It seems like the Western influence right now is degeneracy and destruction and chaos. And so you see that all around. But we don't have to partake in that. As children of God, we need to understand the stability that God has given this world, and we need to tap into that and not tap into the chaos and all the other. And so to sum everything up, I'm very thankful to every one of the listeners. Thank you for listening to Truth to Ponder. Thank you for listening to what I have to say. Thank you for being who you are, the person that God has made you to be. We all need to stop and really see what Thanksgiving should be all about. And it should be very simple, giving thanks to Almighty God. I want to wish each and every one of you a very, very wonderful Thanksgiving. Make sure that you do thank God for everything that he's done for you. Well, I hope that my message was the right one for you today. I really do appreciate your listening. And I appreciate all the people that donate to Truth to Ponder. And I would love for you to consider donating to Truth to Ponder. And you can do that electronically by going to the website, which is truth, the number two, ponder.com. And then you simply go to the support tab, hit that, and it'll guide you through how to electronically donate to the show. But for those who want to do it with regular mail, you can send a check or money order. You'd write the check out to Ancient Word Radio, Ancient Word Radio, and you would mail to Truth to Ponder, P.O. Box 510, Chilhowie, C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E, Chilhowie, Vir- Chilhowie, Virginia, and the zip code is 24319. And again, thanks for listening today, and have a very great Thanksgiving. And so until next time, Stay strong, be thankful, walk in love and walk in truth. But always remember, replace fear with faith. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, truth, the number two, and the word ponder.com. That's truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to Ponder, shining the light of truth in a darkening world.